Stanley Black & Decker hammered home another strong quarter this week as the industrial economy reopens and homeowners continue to remodel their homes during the pandemic. The company's first quarter sales surged 34 percent and profit margins grew in all segments of the company. Stanley Black & Decker also lifted the high end of its full year profit guidance by 70 cents. Joining us now is Stanley Black & Decker CEO James Lurie. James, good to speak with you uh, here. It's been a while. So we go through the quarter here, and this is a pretty strong quarter from you guys. What parts of the business are, are growing the strongest uh, as economies around the world are, are reopening? Well, let me just give you a, a quick walk around the world and a couple of statistics on the products themselves. You know, the, the uh, organic growth in North America was 41%. U.S. retail, you know, which is the home centers and Amazon was up 48%. Europe was up 47%. With the UK, believe it or not, 80% growth, and France, Italy, Spain, and others greater than 30%. The emerging markets, up 77%. Latin America, 77%. Asia was up 62%. I mean, there is a global boom going on for at least uh, the tool market and, and some other markets as well. So, And then just on the products, power tools, up 50%, 5-0. I mean, a typical great uh, quarter for us would be maybe 10, 12, 14%, but 50%, hand tools, 28%, and get this, outdoor, 120% growth. It's just all over the place. Jim, Jim back in my prior life as an analyst, I, I covered you guys for, for close to 10 years, and what always impressed me, you guys are, are true cost savings magicians. Now, this year, you, you called out a $235 million hit from inflation. How are you going to overcome that? Well, we'll get about 235 of inflation, as you said, and then about 30 to 50 percent of that will be covered in price. And the other remaining part will be covered through uh, co cost productivity and something we call margin resilience, which is uh, an effort we've been working on for a couple of years now where we're taking artificial intelligence and machine learning and uh, industry 4.0, which you and I talked about in the past and applying it to the value pools in the company. And that, that really provides another 100 million or so of cushion to help offset that inflation. You know, I've been dealing with inflation for two decades at a, as a C-level executive in this company, and, and we are not at all concerned about uh, the impact on, on the bottom line here with all the great offsets that we have. And, you know, Jim, when you look at the, the breakdown between, you know, the, the pro market and, and the consumer market for, you know, for a lot of your tools and, and you think about the growth trajectory there, um, specifically on, on the home side, on the consumer side, are some of those one time expenditures, someone buys a home, all of a sudden they've got a couple grand of stuff they, they didn't know they needed to buy? Or do you think this is, you know, people thinking more seriously about um, investing in their home, doing more DIY, trying to figure out how to actually use a power drill for the first time um, and sticking with that, you know, through, through, through the cycle here? Yeah, our research certainly indicates uh, the latter. I will say there's a number of uh, dynamics going on with the consumer and the pros, frankly, right now. But th there is a global resurgence of DIY, and it is driven by a generational change uh, where homes are being repurposed. There's a lot of people with a lot of time that are at home. They're looking for things to do. They can do things constructively and productively on the home, uh, and that's a big help. But there's also a, a reconnection with the home as an epicenter of you know, uh, one's existence, at least for the, the time being. And I think it's going to continue on. And the garden as well. And that uh, you, I mentioned the outdoor business growth. I mean, that's just spectacular uh, in terms of people spending time uh, investing in their, in their, uh, their lawns and in their gardens. And Jim, our, our very own Julie Hyman, her morning starts in many respects with very loud gas-powered leaf blowers uh, outside of her window uh, in, in New Jersey. Where is this industry at in terms of turning power tools into electric? Well, it's, you know, for the handheld stuff, you know, the hedge trimmers and the, and the clippers and those types of things, it's, it's well underway. I mean, we're talking, you know, 35, 40 percent or more uh, for the items with wheels like riding mowers and push mowers and those types of things it is you know, nominal it's almost there's almost no penetration of electric and we stanley black and becker are going to be the company that electrifies the lawn and garden market we're buying uh we have an 80 percent an option to acquire the remaining 80 percent of a company called mtd which is an ohio company one of the big uh, lawn and garden uh, equipment manufacturers that serves retail and, and the pro 
Uh, and we're going to take our knowledge of motor technology, battery technology and controls, and their knowledge of, of how you produce those types of, of units, those big, large riding mowers and push mowers, and we're going to combine them. We'll be uh, executing this option most likely in July, August, and we'll own 100% of this company. It's about a $3 billion company, and then we're off to the races. We're going we're gonna to make it happen. All right. So there is hope for our, our very own Julie Hyman. Jim, before we let you go, <laughs> how, how is the chip shortage impacting what you do? Well, there's a, there's a number of shortages that we're dealing with. The first one was uh, battery cells, and we've solved that problem. Uh, and the chip shortage, where we're at with that is, it's not constraining us uh, at this point at all. But if we start to get to a point where we're a couple hundred million dollars more of growth per quarter, it's going to be challenging. So we're really working on, on that. But right now we can go at this run rate and, and a couple hundred million dollars more uh, of revenue at the run rate before uh, we start to get impacted. So I think we're in good shape for the remainder of this year. And we're working on solving 2022 right now, assuming that the you know this uh, red hot growth continues in the industry. All right, we'll leave it there. Stanley Black & Decker, CEO Jim Lurie, always good to see you. Stay safe, have a great weekend. Great to see you to all of you, thank you, take care.